There's a marketplace of ideas. There's a marketplace for deeds and desires. There are people that are competing over this world. There are people that are competing for attention. And there are people that are competing for the attention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the merchandise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us. And the Prophet sallallahu what did he tell the Ansar who were giving up everything of this world, everything material, everything that's immaterial in terms of safety and security. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi tell them they get in return? He said, you get Jannah. And he said that the merchandise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is precious. Verily, the merchandise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Jannah. So we talked about the degrees in Al-Jannah and how many degrees there are in Jannah. And I just want you to think about the dua of as suq the dua of entering the marketplace. The Prophet wasallam said that whoever walks into the marketplace and says, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa hayyun na yamut, biyadihi al-khayr wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever says, there is no God but Allah, alone without partner, to him belongs all sovereignty and praise. He is the one who gives life and he is the one who causes death and he is ever living and he does not die. In his hand is all good and he has power over all things. Rasulullah said, if you say this dua, when you enter into the marketplace, Allah will wipe out a million bad deeds and give you a million good deeds and raise you by a million degrees and build for you a house in paradise. Now you'll notice that the addition to a very common dua here is the addition of yuhi wa yumit. He gives life and he gives death and he is ever living and he does not die. And there's something very powerful about that because you go to the marketplace in this life to be enriched. But instead you realize that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives life and death and gives what is good. So you choose to enrich yourself in Jannah with the dua of a suq, with the dua of the marketplace. You know, a lot of times you might tell yourself, I'm going to say this dua, and I've heard this from many people, but you walk into the store and you immediately forget. Why? Because you're immediately looking towards what you want to buy, what you want to get. And the Prophet Sallallahu is reminding you to say, Allah gives life and death. And what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grants in the afterlife is far more beloved than anything that you can find in this life. And so you enrich yourself. And obviously there is a wonder that comes from this hadith. How many degrees in Jannah are there? If every single time you say this dua, Allah elevates you by a million. If you say this dua a hundred times in life, a thousand times in life, even more, is that going to run out in Jannah? Or are you going to reach a peak in Al Jannah where you can't go any further? And the answer is absolutely not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls all time and place and reward. And there is a correlation that you find here between the marketplace of Jannah and the marketplace of Dunya. Now in this life, you have this contrast between the places that are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the places that are most hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said, the most beloved of places to Allah are the masajid, are the mosques. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped in the masajid. And the most hated places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the aswaq, are the marketplaces. And subhanAllah, even then you have a dua for when you enter that gives you this unimaginable reward. But if you think about these two places with each other, you know, the reward of going to the masjid is all increase, but it's increase of what? It's increase of good. It's the removal of sin. It's the writing of your good deeds. It's the raising of your rank with every single step as the Prophet Sallallahu said. Every single step that you take to the masjid is the wiping out of sins, the writing down of good deeds, and the raising of your rank in Al-Jannah. So you're going to the masjid to be increased. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al jumu'ati, fas'au ila dhikrillah wa dharu al bay'ah, thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'alamun. O you who believe, when you hear the call for the prayer on the day of Friday, rush to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave behind your trade. And that is far better for you if only you knew that this is a far more profitable transaction. What you're going to get from the masjid, 
of reward is far greater than what you would get from your marketplace, what you would get from your trade. So when you go to the masjid, come with your attention, come early, come ready, and look for proper increase and come with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be distracted from what is actually greater. Don't treat the masjid and don't treat prayer like it's a distraction from your actual pursuit. Treat it like it is your actual means of pursuing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how do we know if we're actually pursuing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we see these places with each other? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا انْفَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةً وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ That if they see some sort of a trade or they see a worldly opportunity, then they leave you. They leave you there, O Messenger of Allah, and they go following something of this world and say that what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far better than anything that you would get from this world of play or of pay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of sustainers. And there's a hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that if meat or money was being distributed in the masjid, people would rush to it. And that's why Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu one time, he went out and he called the people from the marketplace. And he said that the inheritance of the Prophet وسلم, is being distributed in the masjid. And so people just rushed. They're in their business and they're thinking to themselves, well, there's free money here. So they didn't actually stop to think about, you know, whether or not there is inheritance from the Prophet وسلم, to be distributed. They just thought maybe there's a better deal here. And so they left their marketplace and they went to the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and what did they find? They found a bunch of halaqat, a bunch of circles of knowledge, people studying Quran, people studying hadith, people studying fiqh. And they went to Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and they said to him, you know, you said that the inheritance of the Prophet sallallahu was being distributed and we didn't see anything being distributed. He said, well, what did you find? They said, we found all of these gatherings of knowledge. He said, that is the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's that ilm, that knowledge that he leaves behind because the Prophets leave behind something far more valuable than something of this world. They leave behind what increases you in the afterlife. Speaking of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu anhu, he says that I met Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu one day and he said to me, make dua that Allah brings us together in the marketplace of Jannah. Sa'id said, is there a marketplace in Jannah? And Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told me that when the people of Jannah enter into Jannah, they will be placed in Jannah according to their deeds. And then they will have permission on Friday, which is the greatest of days. So just like it's the greatest day in this world, it's the greatest day in Jannah as well. It is Jumu'ah. People gather on the day of Friday in the marketplace of Jannah. And there they will visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will appear on his throne in a garden of paradise. And we'll talk about the specifics of that later on. But think about this. You have Jumu'ah in Jannah and it's in the marketplace. Whereas here you're told in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, leave the marketplace for Jumu'ah in the masjid. And Jumu'ah in Jannah is to the suq because you don't have Salat Al-Jumu'ah anymore. This is the place where you're now going to be rewarded. This is not the place that you have to make sacrifice. So the people gather in what is a souq, what is a marketplace in Jannah. And you go to the souq in Jannah and you come back enriched and increased, just like you would go to the marketplace in this dunya looking to be increased. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, describing this place, he said that there is this marketplace in Jannah that people visit on every Friday and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends this wind that blows musk on their faces and on their garments and they're increased in beauty and in goodness. And when they go back home to meet their families, their families will say to them, by Allah, you have increased in beauty and goodness. And you would say back to your family, you too, by Allah, have increased in beauty and in goodness. So everyone goes to the marketplace on Jum'ah. They meet with one another. They meet with their friends. They meet with the leaders of the companions. They meet with the prophets. They meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they come back far more beautified. But don't you also want to shop? You absolutely go to the marketplace in Jannah and you take what you want, but you don't have to worry about a budget when you shop here. And SubhanAllah, how many people go to a shop or go to a marketplace and they wish they had a little more? So they work more to buy that extra product. But in Jannah, you don't have to worry about cash or credit. 
You don't have to worry about a budget. It's all for you and you take as much as you want. You also don't have to worry about the inventory being gone. So, you know, this is especially true when you think about holiday season. You know, everyone takes certain products. This is a place where you pick a fruit from a tree and another fruit grows in its place. So the inventory in Jannah does not run out and everyone thinks that they only have the best that Jannah has to offer. So you have as much money as you want and you have as much product as you want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give you more and more and more and increase you in this marketplace of Al Jannah. But again, here, you juxtapose the masjid with the marketplace as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. And the places of worship in the broader sense and the places of sin. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever takes a bath on Friday, does ghusl on Friday, and then goes for the prayer, those that arrive in the first hour, meaning early, it's as if they have sacrificed a camel in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And those who arrive in the second hour, it's as if they sacrificed a cow. And those who arrive in the third hour, then it is as if you have sacrificed a horned ram. And those who arrive in the fourth hour, it's as if you sacrificed a hen for the sake of Allah. And those who arrive in the fifth hour, it's as if you offered an egg for the sake of Allah. And once the Imam comes out and starts delivering the khutbah, the angels present themselves to listen to the khutbah. So they close their roll book. So the earlier you get to Jum'ah, the more you are increasing in the Jum'ah of Al-Jannah. And in one narration, the closest to Allah are the closest to the Imam on the Manbar. And that doesn't necessarily mean the physical proximity, but what it refers to is the speed at which you got to the masjid. Those who are closest to the Imam on the Manbar are those who got to the masjid first. And who do you think is going to be closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he addresses the gathering of Jumu'ah in Jannah? And who would you want to see in the first row with you? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَادْخُلِي جَنَّتِي